Hi, Mark Zedker. Nice to meet everybody today. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, New Brew and how it's now moving from its initial company stage of introducing blue laser technology to the industrial markets and moving those lasers now into additive manufacturing applications. Uh, the company was originally founded with additive manufacturing in mind and as a consequence um, has established a significant uh, patent portfolio around this technology. Next slide, please. Biggest question we always get is why is blue important? Well, this is a very simple chart to show you that in the infrared, the absorptivity of materials is very low. And as you go to the blue, the absorptivity of material is very, very high. Because of this, we've had tremendous uh, traction in the markets of manufacturing of batteries. And we've also had a number of defense applications where this is important as well. And what we're doing now is applying this into the additive manufacturing space and getting remarkable results to date using powder bed uh, type uh, additive manufacturing machines. We get better services finishes, we get higher densification, uh, we get far, far better uh, parts produced than you can produce with an infrared laser. Next slide, please. Um, we just started doing a fair amount of uh, testing in powder beds. And in this case, we've integrated our blue laser into an EOS M100. Uh, this is our first test with stainless steel. Uh, we have similar tests done in copper. Parts were fully dense. Tensile strength is currently under test. Um, we see an improvement in surface finish. Uh, for the given amount of power uh, that we had at the time, we were running 30% faster at half the power of the IR laser that the system came with. Um, in addition to that, with copper, we're showing greater than 95% part densification uh, right from the machine uh, without having to do any kind of post-processing like hot isostatic uh, processing. The system at the time from uh, EOS was incapable of printing copper, and we've now converted it over to our machine. Uh, we've been very successful at copper and aluminum in this machine to date. Next slide, please. I'll pull up the video. Yep, that'd be great. Metal 3D printing has been plagued by slow production speeds and performance limitations. Imagine a solution that delivers full metal density, small features, no post-processing, and a production speed that's 100 times faster than traditional powder beds. Enter PrintBlue, developing HD area printing with advanced blue lasers. The technology is based on the following principle. A blue laser is imaged onto a digital light modulator with 2 million pixels. The light modulated image is projected on a powder bed and melts a large area of the powder layer with extreme high resolution. A step and repeat process completes the powder bed layer. And successive layers of powder are added and printed. When compared to traditional infrared-based 3D printing, area printing can produce parts at a speed that is 100 times faster. Blue laser technology enables this new area printing method for metal parts, providing a step and repeat process with extremely high speed printing and ultimate efficiency due to high absorption in the blue. With the increased production speed, metal 3D area printing becomes a much more cost-effective solution for precision printing of small and large parts alike. Delivering full metal density without any shrinkage, small features, little to no additional post-processing, and 100 times the speed of traditional powder beds. To learn more about how Nuburu's Print Blue technology is transforming metal manufacturing, visit www.printblue.com. Thank you. On to the next slide, please. So this was just a very quick analysis we did. We've actually demonstrated the process that was shown in the video. And uh, what we can see here in this chart is that we can scale this to very large sizes uh, with very high build rates um, and very, very um, cost effectiveness. Next slide, please. 
You have another 30 seconds. Great. Uh, Nubru, because it started filing patents back in 2012, has 37 patents granted worldwide, including two landmark patents. One is for using a blue laser to weld copper, and another one is for additive manufacturing with blue lasers and how to build blue lasers. Next slide, please. Mark attraction, we have lasers all over the world. Uh, we've received awards for our technology and we continue to expand our applications in the industrial space. Next slide. We're a highly experienced team. We're currently in the middle of our Series C race. Next slide, please. Uh, we're looking for partners to provide uh, funding for developing this print blue technology. This is the second stage of the company and we're looking for up to 50 million and a Series C raise or non-dilutive funding to help us with developing this technology. Okay, next slide. Uh, as I mentioned here, we're founded in 2015. We've got about 30,000 square foot facility in, in Centennial, which includes engineering, manufacturing, and applications development. And we've just dedicated a new uh, additive manufacturing lab. Thank you very much for your time. Any questions? Uh, yeah, so Mark, great presentation. Um, so do you still have the typical process that you would use for uh, powder bed fusion where you need to have a build plate? You might have support structures that you need to remove uh, after the build. Anything different with your process in regards to that? Yeah, because we're using a much lower power density, uh, you still have to have the support structures, obviously. And depending upon how you do the powder spreading, you also have to consider support structures, especially when dealing with overhangs. Um, however, because we're using less uh, power densities, the binding to the um, build plate is less strong, I guess is the best way to describe it. Okay. And it's relatively easy to remove the parts. Okay. Can I, along the same lines, can I ask about the overlap when it comes to each of the sort of digital images that are projected on the part? Do the, do the images overlap or do they just literally align perfectly? And are you finding any issues between the, the divider line between those? Yeah, actually, the, the video doesn't quite show exactly what we did. It's actually a continuous print process. So as a consequence, there's no issues with overlap. But it does print an area at a time, not a single dot. Yeah. Very cool. How Are would you, you compare the price um, oh, to the other conventional um, the method? The price of the machine or the price of the parts? Both. So I had, the slide I showed showed the price of the parts, and you can see a substantial advantage, especially in the um, materials that are highly reflective in the IR. But we still show a price competitiveness in the stainless steel and titaniums and things like that. In terms of price machine, it's on par. Thanks. And, and then since you're using lower power density, do you have less issues with warpage? Great question. Uh, not only less issues with warpage, but there is no spatter. So there is, there's a substantially reduced defect incorporation rate into the part. We're actually using a conduction. I could also see another selling point. What? I could also see another selling point to this being the sort of uh, energy efficiency of the system. Would you say that there's sort of a sustainability component to this? Yeah, the blue laser is so highly absorbed by all the materials, it takes a lot less energy to do a process. And that's one of the reasons why the area printing works with the blue laser is because you simply do not have to put a lot of power into the part to do the job, which of course reduces the part warpage that Robert brought up. So yes, there's a huge energy efficiency um, aspect of this. So uh, Mark, could you, oh, okay. We're moving on, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm queuing it up, ask your question. Yeah, yeah um, commercial timeline. Uh, when will you be in the market uh, selling machines? So we're, we will, yeah, we will be in the market next year with our first blue laser additive manufacturing machine, uh, which will be a powder bed based machine. Uh, it will not be this that we just described here. It'll actually be a simpler design based on the conventional uh, F theta lens and scanner assembly. But this system is about two, two years out. 